We're back out here once again, and today we're talking about when that summer bass fishing gets really tough, there are three baits that I can always turn to to get those hard summer bites. Stick around, we're going to talk all about it. Oh, there we go, I got him. That's a turn, that's the biggest one today. That's the biggest one today. That's a turn, please tell me I'm wrong. And here is this video's featured comment. Congratulations! If you would like to have a chance to have your comment featured in an upcoming video, all you've got to do is leave a comment. And now, on with the video. Welcome back to Lowbrow Fishing. And you know, there are days out on the water when it's really tough. I find myself out there and it's a real grind, especially during the summertime when it's really hot. And I end up making things way too complicated for myself. I'm changing baits, I'm changing presentations, I'm changing colors, and I just think myself right into a corner and it gets frustrating, especially when you can see those fish around you. It's like we've said, you see those bass busting, we know they're in the area, we know they're chasing bait, we know they're active, we can't even get so much as a sniff. So what do we do? Well, we start to get frustrated and we start to overthink the process. And there's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of information on YouTube or on the internet in general about bass fishing and how to catch those hard fish. But what I like to do is, is I like to rewind things. I like to roll everything back to the beginning and hit the reset button. And there are three baits that allow me to do that. I want to go back to basics and I want to keep things simple. So instead of changing from a swim jig to a crankbait to a drop shot to whatever, I try to keep everything into one area and start out with the good old stick bait, right? These things are versatile and that's kind of what I'm talking about. So if I'm not getting a bite, let's say on a wacky rig or a NACO rig, I can change things up without changing the lure. I can grab something like this little Ned head here, right? And I can take an old one, break it in half, or I can take a new one, or I can put the whole thing on here and I've got a different presentation without having to change baits. And that's sort of what I'm talking about. Keep things streamlined, keep things simple. A lot of times I don't even take a whole lot of tackle with me just to keep myself on an even keel. You can use a stick bait in so many different ways. Lately, I've been fishing the Waco rig a lot. I also like a wacky rig. I also like a shaky head. There are so many different ways you can fish this right here. And if one thing's not working, it's really no effort at all, just a couple of minutes, and I can change it out into something else. And another bait that does so well in that category is, well, just a regular old boot tail ribbed swim bait, right? This is a Kitek, and I've got it on a 1 8 ounce angler tungsten. This is just a regular old swim jig head, and it works great. This is something that gets me a lot of bites. It works great on those pressured fisheries because it's a subtle presentation. And if those bass are chasing bait, they're chasing minnows, well, then this fits right in. And the thing about this is this is a bigger presentation. This is a bigger snack than what those bass are seeing. And they're going to go for the bigger bait. They will go for the biggest meal they can get with the least amount of effort. That's what makes bass successful. It's a great survival technique to have. Use as little energy as you can for the biggest payout. And if you can use one of these, you can find those middle schools, you can find those shad schools, those bait schools, or whatever. Something like this will fit right in, but you can work it to make it stand out and attract those bass's attention. And you don't have to just throw it on a regular swim jig head. You can use it, well, like I do with this guy right here. This is a Bitsy Bug. This is just a regular Bitsy Bug jig that I've taken the skirt off. You guys will recognize this as the lowbrow rig. This is something I showed you guys a couple years ago, and that's what you guys started calling it was the lowbrow rig. My area, I've got a whole bunch of vegetation. I've got tons of hydrilla, tons of grass everywhere. Everywhere I fish, 
it's all about the grass. So something like this, if you're fishing shallow, if you're fishing from the bank, this can be exactly the ticket. And it's essentially the same thing. This is a rage swimmer, not a kite tech, but you can use whichever rib style paddle tail or whatever type of swim bait you want to put on here. Keep it nice and simple. You don't have to get super finessey with it. You don't have to get way off out in the left field with it. Just keep it simple, tie on a swim bait, and start making fan casts. You can do it from the bank. You can do it from the boat. And it works great, especially if you see those bass chasing balls of bait. It can be an excellent way of getting those fish to commit when you haven't been able to get anything at all. Put this in front of their face, make it interesting to them, and you will definitely start attracting some attention. Now, lastly, there's another type of bait that I really like to use, and it goes hand in hand with the other two. It's one of the great ways about using this system. We're keeping it simple, we're keeping things versatile, but at the same time, we can mix and match. And that's where these little guys come in. Just simple, small jigs. This is a 1 8 ounce tungsten finesse jig. And I love that color. Brown is a great color for me. And I also like this. This is a little bitsy bug. This is not the flip. This has got the lighter um, weed guard on it, the lighter gauge hook. But two colors. That's all I'm bringing with me. In my case, I like the brown colors and I like the black and blue colors. That, to me, allows me to fish the most different types of water and the different types of situations. And just like where we talked about with this, right? I can take the skirt off of this and put a boot tail swimmer on here. I can put a small one on here. I can put one down to two inches, two and a half inches, or I can use a regular sized one. This one here is 3.3, I believe, and fish it in that manner. So I'm combining those two, which is added versatility. Or I can put something like a, a little rage grub on here or a fat Albert and use that as a trailer. And I don't necessarily have to drag it. The thing that I really like about these little bitsy flips and these little small finesse jigs are that line tie. That line tie being in line with the hook shank, that comes right through the vegetation. So I can almost treat this like a little small swim jig. Again, on those days when those bass are being extra finicky, they're chasing bait, they want something that's maybe moving a little bit higher in the water column, pull this out and you work it with a different type of trailer. Again, a Fat Albert works great with this. And you'd be amazed at how, after all day of working to get those bass to strike and getting fancier and fancier and changing out your lures, going back to something simple can really change the entire day. There you go. I don't know how many are going to be out in the middle. Got him! Oh, that's a toad! That's a toad! That's huge! That is huge! That is huge! Holy cow, honey, this one's a monster. Yeah, I'm recording. At least I hope I am. Yeah, I'm recording. Oh, and he choked it. He choked it. Told you, they're out here. Whew, look at how beautiful! Look at how much he choked at that. So, eh, I thought it was going to be a monster, monster, but he's—I don't know—two and a half pounds, probably about two pounds. So, well, I guess that's good enough. Gorgeous bass, nice color. Oh, he's north of two, two and a quarter. Beautiful fish, beautiful. So. Don't be afraid to play with things. Don't be afraid to mix things up. Like I said, I'm going with very simple setups. I'm going with very simple co colors. When I'm working something like a stick bait, I bring two colors with me. I've got this guy right here, generally a June bug or a black blue flake or a variation of that. I'm going brown. You know, green pumpkin might be the go-to for a lot of guys, watermelon red. I like brown. And I like black blue flake. That's what works for me. Those are my confidence baits on my fishery. And that's what it boils down to. Roll everything back. Go back to the basics. Remember what your confidence baits are. Remember why they're your confidence baits. And try to use them in as many different versatile ways as you possibly can. We're not necessarily changing our bait. 
All we're doing is changing how we're using it, changing how we're working it. And sometimes just that little subtle change, just those minute little adjustments can make the difference, completely change the color of the day. And those bass will go from completely ignoring what you think is a surefire thing to getting some really huge strikes. I've done it time and time again. And I've watched other anglers do it time and time again. So when you feel like the day is getting away from you and you feel like things are getting a little bit too complicated and you're just flummoxed, you're confused and you really don't have an idea of what to do next, hit that reset button, start from scratch, try these baits out, try these presentations out. And I'm telling you, you will have a lot more success on those really rough days. So there you have it. On those hot and miserable days when it's a real grind out there, instead of outthinking yourself and getting frustrated, hit the reset button, dial things back, and go with something simple. You'd be amazed at just how well that works and how it can change the entire outcome of your day. Thanks for watching Low Brawl Fishing. We'll catch you in the next one.